So, I put a call out on Instagram asking what worries everyone has about changing their own oil. And I got a lot of responses. The top concerns, what to do if you overfill your oil, how to remove stuck oil filters, and how to avoid making a big mess. So today on RevZilla, we've got some life hacks that address the most common concerns about oil changes. Let's open up the shop manual. If the Instagram questions are any indication, people are very worried about overfilling their oil. That struck me as a little odd since it's really just a matter of putting the proper quantity in to begin with, but it's understandable that they're worried about it because putting too much oil in can be really bad for your engine. If you add too much, the crankshaft, which normally spins just above the oil level, can actually dip into the oil and whip it into a froth. And your oil pump, it can't pump froth. So even though you have too much oil in your engine, you'll actually have a lack of oil pressure and thus lubrication. So how do you get the extra oil out? You've got a couple of options. And my go-to is to simply unscrew the drain plug for a second and bleed off some oil. Alternatively, you could use a syringe and a length of hose or a turkey baster and some hose to actually draw oil out of the engine. I've also heard of people sacrificing the hand pump from a spray bottle. It's got that nice thin hose so you can get down in the engine, but it might take a while. I'm more of a pull the drain plug kind of guy, but this is technically working. So, you know, it's an option. Ultimately, the best solution for overfilling your oil is to avoid doing it in the first place. You need to start off by knowing how much oil goes into your engine. You can often find that figure printed on the side of the crankcase, but you can definitely find it in your workshop manual. Just make sure you're using the oil and filter volume and not the total engine rebuild volume, which is going to be more. From there, I'll usually put a line on the oil bottle just below the total volume I need and then pour it in. Then you just need to add a little bit of oil at a time until you get it within spec. And regardless of the recommended volume, it is very important that you check the final oil height via the dipstick or the sight glass. Another thing people are worried about is whether or not to set the oil at the top or the bottom of the range. But I'm here to tell you that as long as it is within the hash marks on the dipstick or between the lines in the sight glass, you're all good. I personally like to aim for the middle and say if you've got an older bike that maybe burns some oil, you might as well set it toward the top, but don't sweat it. If it's between the upper and the lower line, it is within spec. Okay, now for the second big concern, which is the stuck oil filter conundrum. First thing I wanna do is remind everybody out there that in order to remove a threaded fastener, you need to turn it counterclockwise. That is lefty loosey people. I know, I'm just reminding you, because sometimes folks forget. But if you're turning it the right way and the filter is just really cranked on there and all that pumping oil out of your engine with a hand pump hasn't given you Kung Fu grip, you're gonna wanna get your hands on a filter wrench. We talked about these in the how to change your oil video and you can get either the socket type or the strap type and either one ought to work. However, if you don't have those tools or those tools aren't getting a good purchase on the filter, you could even use a large set of channel locks or even a pipe wrench to grip the filter and spin it off. That is, of course, assuming you can get those big tools in to where the filter is. Finally, if you don't have a filter wrench or large enough channel locks, you can go psycho on this sucker and stab it with a screwdriver. I am not kidding. You wanna position a Phillips head screwdriver about an inch and a half from the base of the filter so you miss the threaded portion that comes off of the engine, and then you're gonna drive it all the way through with a hammer. Then you can use the handle of the screwdriver to twist the filter off. Gross. It works though, we got it off. This is a brutal method and frankly, it's pretty messy, so it should probably be your last resort. And following that Exxon Valdez of a mess, the most common question was how to change your oil without getting oil everywhere. At a minimum, you should have lots of cardboard and rags or paper towels on hand. Spread cardboard out, not just under the bike, but all around the bike to catch any drips and splashes that inevitably happen when we change our oil. Now, cardboard is easy to get. You can either pull it out of the recycling bin or you can use the box from your last Revzilla order and nobody has ever regretted putting too much cardboard down. Other tips for keeping clean are to use aluminum foil to shield the headers, as I've mentioned before. And I know this is gonna seem obvious, but if you use a funnel to help get oil into your engine, it makes the job a lot easier and it definitely helps avoid spills. Even if you do all of that, accidents still happen. And if things have gone really off the rails and you've got a small pond of oil spreading across your driveway, the age old cleanup material is kitty litter. You pour it on, you grind it in, you sweep it up. 
Sand will work too, but it's not nearly as absorbent. No matter how experienced you are, there is no avoiding the mess of oil residue that lingers after an oil change. You're gonna have it on your hands and your forearms, it's gonna be on your tools, it's gonna be in your funnel, it's gonna be dripping down the bottle of leftover oil. And it is not going to magically disappear if you ignore it. No, it is going to stick around, it is going to spread, and it's going to attract grime. So it's really important that you clean it up. Now, there are plenty of degreasers and cleaners that you can buy, but my secret weapon is good old fashioned rubbing alcohol. I'll use it with a clean rag to wipe down my tools and my funnel and my drain pan. I wanna get rid of all of that gross oil residue. Isopropyl alcohol is readily available at grocery stores and pharmacies. It's really cheap and it's safe to use on painted surfaces, plastic, and even your skin. Pretty much all of the problems we've discussed are easily avoidable if you read your owner's manual and go about your oil change in a careful, deliberate manner. But nobody is perfect. And at least now you know how a turkey baster, some aluminum foil, a screwdriver, or perhaps even a box of kitty litter can save the day.